hey guys, I have a Discord server. You guys should totally join our community. I'm also really active on Twitch as well as social media, like Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. If you guys want to follow me and stay up to date with everything, check out all the links in the description down below. And I guess enjoy the video. Hey, what's up guys, it's Chibber here and welcome back to a brand new video. And today I'm gonna to show you guys how to improve your frame rate in CSGO. So whether you have a high-end PC or a low-end PC, I'm gonna give pretty much all the tips and tricks on how to improve your performance in game and hopefully it works. If all these tricks don't work, then there's a chance your computer might be a little bit too old and you might have to upgrade. CSGO is not a hard game to run, but a lot of people try to run this game on a on like laptops from like 2001 or something. I'll tell you guys everything I know about improving your frame rate, but for some people, upgrading might be the only way. All right, so the first big tip is obviously in the launch options. So before you actually start up CSGO, you right click on it and then you click on properties. And then once you click on properties, you go to set launch options and then you can set whatever launch options you want. So these are some of my launch options and obviously depending on your setup, you might have to pick slightly different ones. I use a Freak 240 because I, I use a, I play on a 240 hertz monitor. I do tick rate 128 to make all offline servers 128 tick. I do Novid to kind of skip the little intro and and like it starts the game a little bit quicker and then i put dash high and essentially what dash high does is it's when you start up csgo instead of it using a regular amount of your cpu power it's prioritized to use like more of your cpu power so essentially it's a way to improve your frame rate if you have a good enough cpu like like i have an i7 8700k if you have an i7 or something like it's not a terrible idea to turn this on however though it does use more of your cpu so if you're like trying to stream and do a million things at once this could affect that but it has improved improved frame rate significantly in my opinion. Out of all these, none of these are really mandatory except for the dash high thing. If you put dash high in the launch options, it'll automate, I'll show you how to do it. So there's another way to do it in task manager and all you have to do is just go to details. Okay, so it's kind of weird. So because I don't have CSGO running, um, we're gonna have to do it with Chrome instead, but it's a very, very simple process. Pretty much all you have to do is right click on CSGO. We're just doing Chrome <laughs> for an example. And then you click on set priority and then you change it to high or above normal. You can try real time, but I, th I think real time might hurt your CPU or real time could use too much of your CPU power and that could cause CSGO to run worse or it could cause your computer to blue screen or whatever. So um, what I personally do is I just use high. I set the priority to high and well, that's what that command does. Cause if you do it this way, you have to do it every single time you start up CSGO. But if you set up the launch option with dash high, it'll automatically make it high. If high runs unstably or if it uses too much of your CPU and your CPU gets too hot, try above normal. And if none of those work, just delete everything. Cause that's definitely one thing that's helped improve my frame rate significantly. Uh, another little tip I have for you is if you have a CPU that has hyper threading, disabling it can actually give you a little bit of a boost in frame rate. It's not too much, but I've definitely noticed that it's made a little bit of a difference. So if you have an i7 8700K or like any sort of CPU with hyper threading, go into your BIOS and disable it. Now, if you do a lot of things that benefit from hyper threading, you might as well leave it on because it's kind of a pain in the ass to turn it on and off again every time you need it. So anyways, let's hop into the game and I'll give you guys a couple more tips and tricks. Um, another thing that might help is turning on Windows 10 game mode. All you have to do, uh, it should be on by default. You press the Windows key and G and then you, you basically put it on game mode. I, I don't know exactly how to turn it on, but it's very simple. The Windows 10 game mode actually, so when I did my original testing, when I made the original version of this video like a year ago, I actually tested on two different computers and on my laptop, which is way less powerful, I was able to actually get a much better frame rate with game mode on because I guess it disables a lot of the background features of Windows 10. So it, if your computer is not as powerful, game mode can definitely make a difference. If your computer is more powerful, then it's literally not going to make a difference at all. And then as for the best settings, so if you don't really care about performance, like these are the settings that I personally play on, but okay, so a few of these actually do make a little bit of a, of a difference in game. So if you want to get the most frames possible, my advice for the best settings would probably be maybe medium for global shadow quality and then shader detail on medium because you want, you still want shaders to be on so you can actually see the shadows because if you can't see them, then that puts you at a little bit of a disadvantage. And then you can put models slash texture detail on low and then effect detail on low as well. You also want to turn off FX 
FXAA, and you can also turn off anti-aliasing. Um, for me personally though, I actually like anti-aliasing on, so I'm not going to turn it off. Uh, and then anisotropic filtering also eats the hell out of your CPU. So you want to drop it to either bilinear or trilinear. I had it on like four times because I just, I don't know, I want the game to look good, but I don't want it to use too much of my CPU. So it, it obviously just depends on your hardware. Also, you want motion blur to be off and you want vertical sync to also be off. On top of all that, you also want multi-core rendering to be on because that's a very important thing. If you have it off, then it severely affects your frame rate. Also, one more thing to uncap your frame rate because the game is actually capped at 300 frames a second at default. So the game automatically out of the box is capped at 300 FPS. If you want to get more, let me explain how to turn on the console. So to turn on the console, you go to game settings and then right here it says enable developer console. You say yes. And then you press the tilt key right below your escape key and then you type in FPS underscore max zero and that'll uncap your frame rate. Pretty much as long as you play with all these settings with everything that I said, it should definitely improve your frame rate by a significant amount, depending on your hardware. So, I mean, even if you're on like high-end hardware, like a higher frame rating game can definitely make a massive difference. So let's hop on Dust 2 with bots, just, just for the sake of testing the frame rate. On my regular settings, I get around 300 or so frames a second on pretty much, well, almost max settings. So let's see how much of a difference this makes, turning the settings down and then making a few other differences. Also, there's one more thing I want to show you guys. The only downside to playing on the lowest settings is skins don't, skins look way way worse skins don't look that good on like the on the super lowest settings like if you're playing the game on the lowest settings skins don't really look that amazing like this blue drum right here oh god that looks gross that's nasty <laughs> if you're a skin player i think it definitely benefits to play on like a like higher settings but i mean obviously i'm getting about 550 frames a second so i'm actually getting a lot more i'm getting a higher frame rate than i usually get which is actually super nice, but I don't really think it's enough to really justify the way that at least the blue gem looks. It looks really gross like this. So I'm going to change my settings just a little bit more. All right, here we go. So now that I turn the frame rate down, I'm getting actually I'm getting roughly the same frame rate. It seems like CSGO is optimized enough to give you a good frame rate. I mean, not no matter what, obviously, because this obviously has a little bit of an impact on my frame rate. But at least the blue gem looks a lot better. Like, it's a lot more detailed. It, pretty much overall, all the skins have better shaders. Like, there's there's shadows around the map. Like, I definitely like the way that the game looks right now. I li like, I like the shadows. I like the, like the details. I just like the way that everything looks. I don't know. It looked weird with everything off. If your computer is, like, really out of date and it's not that powerful, you might have no choice but to lower your settings to get a decent enough frame rate to be, for it to be playable. But honestly, my biggest piece of advice is if you're on, like, a pretty high-end gaming PC, I would recommend just, just playing on whatever settings you like the best if you like high settings play on those if you like low settings play on those i think as long as you're getting over like 300 or so fps you know i think the performance is you know good enough so basically if you want to get more frames on csgo you have to put on dash high in the launch options you have to turn on windows game mode if your computer isn't that if, if your computer isn't amazing because i know that can definitely help on lower end computers and then most importantly lower the settings but i have one more tip that's more about it's more of a personal preference than anything, uh, but this is a tip on how to play the game in stretched mode. Because uh, a lot of you guys have probably been wondering, like, how do I play in some in a weird custom resolution? All right, so obviously you can pause the game and then go into the video settings and stuff and change the resolution. You can change it to like, I don't know, 16 by 10 and then go for some weird res. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of, of tweaking. I'm gonna have to tweak this a little bit because like the video is like the wrong format right now. Um, but I basically just changed the game to, uh, I guess, 16 by 9 or 16 by 10 stretched. Okay, and one of the biggest benefits of playing on a stretch resolution is obviously you're playing on a lower resolution, so it actually will affect frame rates in some ways. Like in this area, previously I was getting about 530 or so FPS. So for me personally, because I'm playing on a higher end PC, it actually doesn't affect frame rate at all. I'm getting pretty much the exact same frame rate I was getting before. But definitely on lower end hardware though, it would make more of a difference. So lowering your resolution could also help too. Like if your computer can't handle 1080p, try 720p or even try like a stretch resolution. It's a little tricky to set up stretch resolutions properly, but I'll show you guys, I'll walk, I'll walk you guys through it. All right, so you start up your NVIDIA control panel and you do need an NVIDIA card for this. If you have an AMD graphics card, then I don't know how to set this up. But essentially the way that a stretched resolution works is normally it's set on aspect ratio, but all you pretty much have to do is change it to full screen. With aspect ratio, it'll basically create the resolution in the perfect aspect ratio. So it'll, it, it, you will have black bars on the sides. And um, if you're gonna play stretched, you might as well play with your full screen instead of having the black bars because like it's, it's it's like playing 1080p but with less peripheral vision <laughs> but essentially literally all you have to do is just click on full screen and then just up click on apply and there you go you're good to go 
you can change it to the stretch resolution and it'll basically stretch it out. Now, obviously playing stretched can be a little weird. So it definitely, it, it takes some getting used to, but at the end of the day, like playing on a stretch resolution won't necessarily make you a better player. It just all comes down to personal preference. So just try to figure out what settings you like, try to figure out like, try to figure out like what gives you the best frame rate and like what looks the best. So keep in mind, you just got to figure out what looks the best and what has the best performance. And you might have to make a couple compromises, especially if your computer isn't that amazing. So you don't have to turn everything all the way down. You can also go to the change resolution section and you can literally Really click on customize and you can create any custom resolution you want and any kind of frame rate yeah you can create like a thousand by a thousand or whatever doing this uh, and then you can just add it as like a new custom resolution and it should work in csgo personally though i don't really like a stretch resolution and i just play it like 1920 by 1080 just native res of my monitor now keep in mind i probably would play at a lower resolution if it meant i could also run the game at a higher frame rate like that would definitely be a compromise that i'd be willing to make but as of right now it doesn't really affect affect the frame rate enough for me to like really care and I just like the game looking nice mainly because of the skins <laughs> like I want the skins to look good in the game because you know, well you know I'm a skin youtuber no one watches me for the gameplay people watch me for the skins basically <laughs> uh it's sad and depressing but it's, it's kind of true though but honestly guys I hope today's video was helpful and hopefully it can help improve your frame rate obviously it's not going to be able to help all of you guys if you're playing on like a 2001 laptop that can't play anything then there's not really too much you can do you could try lowering the settings of the game and you can try lowering the resolution and also turning on game mode but there's a chance I might not be able to help you so just experiment and figure out what works the best for your computer basically that's pretty much all I have to really say about it. So I made a video about how to get the perfect config. Now this is a video about how to get the perfect resolution and how to, you know, optimize CSGO to run better. Basically, it's a way to get more frames in CSGO so you can dominate the noobs. So hopefully you guys enjoyed my, my last two tips and tricks videos. Let me know if you guys want more because uh, if, if you guys want them, I'll make more of them. Like pretty much whatever kind of videos you guys want me to do, I'll try to make those as long as it's not like something stupid. <laughs> like, terrible, play Fortnite. Like, no. No, I'm never going to play Fortnite. I hate Fortnite. But Turbo, why are you such a sour puss? Why don't you just play Fortnite? Because it's a garbage game. <laughs> that, like, it used to be good before like season two. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed the video, like, comment, share, subscribe, click that bell icon. And if you watch the video all the way until the end, leave a comment saying hashtag Turbo. My frame rate is a little bit better now. Or Turbo, my frame rate is exactly the same. Your tips did nothing. XD. I can do either one of those. And if you do that, I'll do my best to try to give you guys a heart. And overall, hopefully this video was useful. Hopefully it helps you improve your frame rate. And I guess I will see you guys tomorrow. So thank you guys so much for watching. It's Turbo and I'm out. Peace.